Today we are talking about motion sickness in children. My name is Sarah Hunstead. I'm a pediatric nurse, mum of two girls, and I'm also founder of CPR Kids. And at CPR Kids, what we do is we empower parents, families, and carers of kids with the life-saving skills of baby and child first aid. And we also talk all about subjects like this when it comes to child children's health, because we want you to have the best information out there when it comes to the health of your child. And I love talking about motion sickness in children, mainly because it's a subject close to my heart because my two kids and myself suffer terribly from motion sickness. I know how awful it is. Um, one of my claims to fame is the fact that I vomited snorkeling, which I didn't actually know <laughs> was possible. So that is, uh, yeah, so that's certainly something that uh, I'm not exactly proud of, but it's something that I've got to live with. Now, before we go any further, what I would love is that if you can tag in the comments below anybody who you think will benefit from this information today, we are going to be talking about what causes car sickness, the ages in kids that it affects, the symptoms of car sickness and what you can do about it. So pharmacological and non-pharmacological things. So that means uh, medicines you can give and also other uh, things that you can do to try and help stop the car sickness. So that's what we're going to be talking about. If you can tag anybody who you think will benefit from knowing this down below, because car sickness affects around 30% of the population, which is a huge amount. So that's why I would love you to be able to share this. That would be great. So let's get into it. What is the cause of car sickness? Basically comes down to the parts of your body that sense motion. So our inner ear is uh, basically what senses motion for us. But your eyes, your skin, your muscles and your joints also help you to feel where you are in space. And what happens is, is when you get motion sick, your, what your inner ear is perceiving doesn't match up with what the rest of your body is understanding. And that is uh, part of the reason that we get motion sick. So if you can imagine you're in the back seat, you're reading a book, your eyes aren't seeing that you're moving, you're stationary, so your body isn't kind of, you know, sensing that you're moving your muscles and your joints, but your inner ear can feel that you're in motion in the car and that doesn't match up with what's happening. And so that's why we become motion sick. So what ages does motion sickness affect? Well, there was a big study of over 5,000 kids that um, the people who were doing the study went and discussed with their parents over a period of time. And what they found was that it's incredibly rare for kids under the age of one to have car sickness. It happens to a few kids under the age of two, but mostly what happens is it peaks between about the ages of four and 13 years. So that's when it becomes the most prevalent. But the good news is, is that after about the age of 13, children tend to grow out of it, which is good news. Some of us don't, obviously, but a lot of children do. So that's still quite a few years that you're gonna to have to deal with cleaning up the back seat, but it is a good thing that most of them do grow out of it, okay, by adolescence. So what are the symptoms of motion sickness? Now, when I say motion sickness for a start, it can be caused by car sickness, um, which is really common. It can be caused by air travel. It can be caused by virtual reality devices and, you know, roller coaster rides or rides at a fair, something like that. And so, and of course, then there's seasickness as well, which is absolutely debilitating. If you've ever had seasickness, it's terrible. I remember having seasickness so badly once that I was actually calculating whether the drop off the side of the boat would break any bones in my body and whether it would be preferable to break some bones rather than stay on that boat any longer. Your brain doesn't work properly when, you, when you're seasick, believe me. I look back now and I go, geez, what was I thinking? But it really is awful at the time. 
So what are the symptoms? You may find that your child starts to become drowsy, that they, they might start to yawn. And I know that's definitely one of the signs for both myself and one of my kids. As soon as she starts yawning, I'm like, okay, quick, where's the bomb bag? Um, because absolutely, that's one of her things. So drowsy, yawning, they might get cranky because they're feeling yuck, they start to get quite cranky in the car. They might get a bit clammy or sweaty as well. They can complain of dizziness if they're old enough to understand what that is. I remember one of my um, kids used to say before she could articulate what dizziness was, that she felt like her eyes were dancing in her head, um, which is a little bit of a strange way to explain it, but that's how she perceived dizziness. Um, obviously, they start to become nauseous as well, which can absolutely be followed by vomits. And of course, headaches too. They can start to become a bit headachy and just, ah, just yuck. So what can you do? First of all, you need to be prepared, okay, just in case. We'll talk about in just a minute the kind of things that you can do to try and prevent it, but preparation is really important. These are one of my favorite things in the world. So the vomit bags that you can just get from the chemist, often they come in a little packet with a wipe and a tissue and these, and they are great for kids who tend not to aim very well. So my daughter is shocking. At home, if she had gastro or something, I used to give her the big bowl and she'd still manage to vom over the side. She just couldn't, her aim is shocking. But with these things, they were great. So I used to say to her, just put, just put it on your nose. So she would put, she knew just to put that part there and rest it on her nose and it worked really, really well for her. So being able to do that, it stops the vomit going everywhere else. If your child is old enough to hold this, these are a fantastic thing. Now, but what happens if your child is too young to be able to aim? Uh, I've heard people talk about vomit ponchos. Apparently it's a thing where it's like a big towel that sits on the child a bit like a bib. And so that child who's strapped into their car seat, the towel kind of goes over the top and it catches the vomit. Um, but sounds great but one thing I really encourage you to do is make sure it doesn't interfere at all with your child's harness in their car seat it can't go underneath it and of course that it isn't a choking risk to your child so that's a really really important thing okay so just be aware of those sorts of things too and of course um, I've seen people who have, you know, put big buckets and stuff in their car, but be cautious of that because if you're in an accident, that bucket can become a projectile in the cabin of the car. Um, so you want to be a bit careful with that. That's why I like these things so much because they're not going to be dangerous in a car accident um, and so on. And so that's why they're great if your child is old enough to do so. And of course, having some wipes in the car to clean up afterwards and something to clean stuff up out of the back seats, really important too. And you know, a lot of car seats um, have got removable washable covers, um, obviously something that is along with the manufacturer's guidelines, not something extra that's put over the top. So what other things can we do to try and prevent rather than just prepare? First of all, keep it cool in the car. Do not blast the heat. That hot, stuffy environment makes you feel much worse. It makes the kids feel much worse in there. So being able to crank open a window and have the wind coming in is actually really important because not just does it give your child the fresh air, but that feeling of the wind on their face is actually how they can help match up that sense that they are moving. So that's really important. So being able to open up a window and have fresh, cool air on their face is great. If it's 47 degrees outside, it's probably not such a good idea. You might want to put the air con on if your car's got air con and have that blowing on their face, okay? We don't encourage you to put fans on in the car because they can become projectiles if they're not well secured in a car accident as well. So, and they can just be a bit dangerous. So don't be, yeah. Anyway, I'll leave that. If there's a special baby safe one that I certainly don't know about, then of course, by all means, but otherwise just don't go putting those little portable fans in there. Crank open the window, put the air con on, try and get that blowing on their face. What else can you do? 
We want to keep them looking up and out. This is where we get into lots of trouble. So reading is particularly bad. I mean, we love kids reading, but unfortunately what can also happen is that that will make it much worse. Screens, not quite as bad as reading, but still can make them feel really, really sick. So thinking about audio books, I can recite you every single word from the magic faraway tree. There's only so much Moonface and Silky you can deal with. Okay, trust me. Um, and I love the faraway tree, but for the 147th time, it gets a bit much. So please have an array of audio books ready to go in your car. That can be really helpful for distraction as well. And of course, thinking about podcasts, singing is another good one too, because when they sing, what's happening is, is they're able to take a nice big, deep breath and that deep breathing will also help. Okay. So we've got the podcast, the audio books, the singing that encourages the deep breathing as well. So I want them looking up and out and also think about their car seat position, depending on your car seat and your vehicle. Um, have a look at the guidelines, the manufacturer's guidelines, and see where the car seat can be placed. Your child might be better off in the middle looking out the window. You might uh, find that your child is better off on the side where they can, where you can crack open the window and they've got more, you know, better access to the fresh air. So move that around, see what works for your family, that depending on your car and your car seat, of course, as well. And so other things, drinking, really important to keep them well hydrated. So lots of water is really important. Often before a long road trip, we'll go, don't give them too much to drink. We'll have to stop because they'll need to wee. Give them that rather than being dehydrated, which will make it worse. And lots of simple snacks. One time I didn't realize that my child was car sick and we stopped on our road trip and um, we got a pie, actually, a really delicious one until it ended up all over the back seat. That wasn't much fun. And so a really a nice simple snack would have been a much better idea, something that is easily digested rather than it's gonna sit there for a while. That wasn't such a good idea. But other things that you can do to try and prevent, you may have heard of C-bands. Um, C-bands are little acupressure bands. I use them when I had morning sickness and I found that they did help um, a little bit. Uh, some people say they work wonders for motion sickness. Some people say they do not help at all. There's no harm in trying them. It's just little acupressure points that go on the wrists. Um, it won't do your child any harm. Yeah, give them a go. You know, really, you, often when your child has got severe C, or C sickness or car sickness, motion sickness, you'll try anything. So give it a go. It might help, it might not. Ginger is another good one. Uh, it's certainly um, been in lots and lots of studies that show that ginger actually can definitely help with nausea. And But what I would like you to do is have a chat to your pharmacist or your GP or pediatrician just to see what kind of preparations are good for your child because we need to remember, even though it's natural, okay, that when it is, you know, certainly in a medication form, that it is exactly that, it's medicine. Okay, so we need to always remember that too. And of course, there are anti seasickness and anti motion sickness drugs as well. Some of them are antihistamines too. And some of them we need to be quite careful with because some of them you can't use in children under the age of six, some of them you can't use under the age of two. And there are some of the antihistamine ones will actually, uh, will in some susceptible kids can make them hyperactive, it can rev them up. And so that's why it can be very important to test them before you go on your road trip or your plane trip because you don't want your child bouncing off the inside of the airplane. Not that we're going on airplanes at the moment, um, but certainly inside the car. We don't want that to happen. So always, always, always please speak to your GP or your pediatrician or your pharmacist first before you give the medication to your child to see if it is actually appropriate for them. That's really, really important. And there's one more big thing that we need to remember. If a nice big vomit does happen, don't freak out. Why? Because kids can easily get vomit phobias. <laughs> I know that sounds a bit weird, but for a child, 
Vomiting is a massive life event. I remember my oldest, the first time she vomited, she was terrified because it kept coming and coming and coming and she thought that she couldn't possibly have that much food in her tummy and so that it was her insides coming out. She was terrified. And, you know, because you can just sometimes when you have those crazy vomits, you know, you do feel pretty awful. And I remember her looking at me with these big eyes and I was just, even though on the inside I'm going, oh, this is really gross. This is going to be a massive clean up. Oh, no, can you just hold still and get it in one spot Ugh. you know I've got that smile on my face and reassuring going it's okay you are fine don't worry it's okay so I'm not all ah. and it's hard when you've got a massive spew in the back of the car and you've got another three hours to drive and you're thinking how are we going to put up with this stench because I don't have everything to clean it but put on that smile that okay everything's okay it's all right, we'll deal with it. It's no big deal, no big deal. Because we don't want vomiting to become a huge deal, okay? All right, so that's the important thing. You might like to say, oh good, you got a little bit of vomiting, that's great. Let's see if we can aim the whole lot in there next time. So anyway, let's do a quick summary. And then if there are any questions at all, what I want you to do is type them in the comments, please, because I'd love to answer your questions. So have a think of that and start putting them in the comments as I just do a quick recap. So what causes motion sickness? It's when our inner ear that senses our motion doesn't match up with what the rest of our body is seeing. And so that's all feeling. And that is when we become motion sick. It affects mainly children aged from two to 13 years. Quite a few of them grow out of it by adolescence. It's rare to have it certainly in an under one year old. Symptoms can include drowsiness, yawning, crankiness. They can become clammy or sweaty. They can get dizzy. Of course, the nausea and the vomiting and they might get a bit headachey as well. So what can you do? Be prepared, have the clean up items in the car and one of my favorite objects here. And you can just get these from your local pharmacy, okay? Keep it cool in the car. Don't crank the heat. Crack a window, get the cool air coming in, or if it's, you know, summer and really hot outside, then perhaps you might want the aircon going if that's an option. Distraction, looking up and looking out, really important. So up from the screens, think audio books, think podcasts, think I spy, okay, things like that. Singing to get them breathing nice and deeply. Lots of water, lots of simple snacks as well if they feel like eating. And of course, some of the remedies that we can use, there's the acupressure um, things such as C-bands, there's ginger, and of course, then there's the pharmacological drugs such as the um, anti-motion sickness or anti sea sickness pills and antihistamines as well, which you must speak to your GP or pediatrician about or your pharmacist uh, before you give them to your child. Of course, you can also think about car seat position as well. And if it does happen, don't go crazy, okay? cool calm cucumbers when it comes to the vomiting so let me have a look if we have any uh questions at all let's see okay i am just having a look to see if we have any questions at the moment okay oh, i just gotta find it i'm not doing so well here there we go okay let's have a look all right no questions at the moment Okay, that's all right. No problems at all. Let's just see, make sure I'm not missing anything at all. Okay. Oh, I just, I hate it when I miss the questions. That's why I'm just absolutely making sure that I'm not missing anything. And I don't think I am. I sincerely apologize if I have. And of course, in the comments below, I will be putting in there all the fact sheets for today as well so you've got a resource for later it has been an absolute delight um, speaking with you all today i love doing this if there's any suggestions that you have of what you would like us to bring you next week just pop them in the comments below as well because we love to bring you what you want to hear about too so have a fantastic weekend everyone hopefully we will see you very soon okay bye everyone